Yeah, we're rolling. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I got my son Caleb behind the camera. Thanks Caleb for being with us. GMC Yukon Denali we're working on. Apparently the blower motor is not working at all. So um, I guess the first thing that I wanted to do was to scan the system, see what kind of fault codes we have. I don't know if this is a uh, computer controlled climate control system or not yet. So these are just some preliminary things. So I'll get you on the scan tool here with me. So what I'm gonna do guys is a code scan. This is, gonna, this is going to uh, scan all the modules for fault, okay? Well, that was super fast too. So a bunch of engine codes. Man, this got, this got codes out the wazoo. We're just worried about the blower circuit, I guess. We have uh, fuel system rich codes. Oh, it's still going through. I'm going to wait till it's done. On our, while this is still doing its code scan, guys, what we have is a, we do have individual driver passenger controls. This is going to be computer controlled. It has an auto button, uh, auto climate control. It's computer controlled for sure. And uh, we have no blower control. So the, my fan, it's a little fan symbol. And then the bar, we have nothing, nothing at all. And then we have some weird noises coming from the OnStar speaker system. It's just weird. Anyway, all right, codes, rich codes probably an alcohol in fuel miscompensation or miscalculation is my guess on that evap emission large leak purge flow code brake switch don't care about that transmission fluid pressure airbag system has a fault code front end sensor we know about those i have a video on some front end sensors on these gms they crack look for a link little icon right here next to me uh, that's if this is on YouTube. I'm not sure where this video is going yet, but uh, I do have some video on the front end sensors and on the alcohol in fuel tests. Driver's door switch. We have some U codes, passenger door switch. I don't care about any of that. Electronic suspension. Dude, there's codes on every system in this vehicle. <laughs> nice. I have an HVAC code. It says airflow control 10, feedback circuit short to battery or open. Not totally sure what that means. It has a feedback circuit involved with the blower motor that's setting a fault code. I don't know if we can get help on that or not. B3782, that's what we want. Let's go there first, HVAC. There it is, HVAC. So this next question says, with automatic HVAC or with manual, and the way that you would tell simply is you look at the dash, and if you see an auto button, then that tells you where we are. So we're picking with automatic AC. This will give us the same code that we had in that main code list. It should, why does it say no codes present? There it is, history code, B3782. So let's just see if we have, do we have a troubleshooter on this? <laughs> there it is, sweet. Just need a little info on this without going to Mitchell. It says that airflow control feedback circuit short to ground, airflow control feedback circuit short to battery or open, or actuator stuck. It says the HVAC control module controls the HVAC door actuators to regulate the airflow through the HVAC system. Each actuator consists of an electric motor, a potentiometer. Module supplies a low reference, five volt, so wait. This is talking about the mode door, not the blower. Airflow control. Uh, airflow control. See, I'm thinking blower airflow feedback. That's not what this is. Airflow control is a mode door in which direction we're moving the doors. Guys, this has nothing to do with the blower motor not working at all. Uh, this is talking about a mode door and a position sensor signal. And again, this is not what we're doing either. So we're, we're going to attack this like a normal blower circuit. It's going to use some type of module that controls the speed or it has a resistor. 
and then the blower motor itself. So this should be pretty straightforward. I'm actually gonna try to stay low tech here first. Just gonna go grab my test light. Unless I can do something else with the data. Let's see what kind of data parameters we have. Inputs. So when a blower motor doesn't work, we're talking about a switch, the inputs, we're talking about the motor itself, and then the resistor bank or a module. Some of these will be pulse width modulated. Fan down button. Nice, okay, cool. So I'm looking at fan down button, this one right here, and I'm looking at fan up button. And if, when I hit this, it's, it says inactive right now. If I hit the down, you see it goes active. If I hit the up, it should go active. And so there's a real nice fast test for the switch itself. This computer is seeing this. There's no issue on the input side. Now we're on the output side. On off, AC, auto, mode, defrost, good there. Let's go back to a functional test, see what I can do here with a functional. Auxiliary blower motor. Auxiliary blower motor should be the rear if it has one. Does this have rear air? I do not see a rear air setting there. Yes, it does. Okay, there's blower motor. So I, I said I was staying low tech and grabbing my test light, but if I have the scan tool connected and I can do this kind of stuff, this is pretty cool. So this is one where I can command the blower motor to turn on. So I'm gonna do that right now. Nothing. So we're on the output side. When you have a bi-directional test like this, what this tells you is that we do not have an input problem. So when you, let me restate that, when I take a scan tool like this, and I bi-directionally am turning the blower motor on and off. What I'm doing is I'm bypassing any switch on the dash. So anything here on the dash it really eliminates that. Uh, the output that I'm doing eliminates these inputs. It's still not being controlled. We have an output issue, okay? Inputs are fine. We already know that, just teaching some other aspects here. All right, so that's not really helping me. Um, uh, I'm back to doing our checks at the motor. I need to get some test equipment. Blower motor's right here, so I just gotta take this bottom panel off. Okay, so some basics. This device right here is controlling. This would be my, my controller. It's either a resistor or it is a module. Uh, I don't have a diagram right now. Uh, and that is controlling the blower speed, the blower motors right here. So the purple wire and black wire would be the two wires that go to the motor. That'd be a power and a ground. Just a real fast power and ground check right here is where we're gonna start. And I said I was gonna use my test light, but I am choosing not to because I have my Varus already synced up here. And it'll be a lot easier for you guys to see what I'm doing by using the voltmeter part of the Varus. So you guys that are following this video, you don't need to have this expensive scan tool to do the test that I'm about to show you. Just a simple voltmeter is all that's needed, okay? I gotta find a known good ground. Went to a metal bracket on the dash. We do not know if it's known good yet. I'll find out here in a second. I'm just gonna go to my digital multimeter. Again, if you have a voltmeter, you can do this test. Going to the, the purple wire first, just back probing the connector. Right there it has battery voltage on it, 11.3. And is that low? Because the battery's weak, most likely. There's 11.6. So what, what I wanna do, before I check the ground, I wanna see if I can make that voltage go away. <clears throat> now the way these blowers are controlled, Again, I'm not using a diagram, just not common knowledge. We'll either control the ground side of the blower or we'll control the power side of the blower. And um, what I was gonna do next is turn the blower off and see if my voltage goes away. 
if the voltage stays there then I'll know it's being controlled on the ground side if the voltage goes away I know it's being controlled on the power side so um, there are variables to this I'm getting ahead of myself let me do my checks and I'll explain to you guys what I'm doing so I have battery voltage there I'm going to go on the ground wire real quick this is the opposite wire the black wire and it looked like I had voltage on that too Let's see, hold on. and you'll notice I'm doing this plugged in I'm back probing it that's my let's see there's power 11 6 yeah it's there's voltage on the ground side so what that tells me is this blower motor is not being controlled right now um, and that voltage is fluctuating too very strangely so in other words the, the the tests I've done so far say this is not a bad blower motor this is a, a controller issue right here um, now I, there's some variables here but that's first view I don't like the way this voltage is fluctuating either um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, turn the blower switch off and we're gonna watch our voltage here So we'll just go, that is off. So you see it went to 11.5 with it off. This is definitely being controlled on the, on the ground side of this circuit. You see the, that's with the circuit on up here on the dash. Blower on high, turn the blower speed down. All right, so what I need to do now guys is, um, I could be wrong about what I'm saying here. This could be a pulse width modulated circuit and our voltmeter is not fast enough to show it to us. So I have to go to my graphing meter now. Or we can go to our lab scope because it might be a really fast signal that the graphing meter doesn't have a time base to show us. But you guys that are using a regular multimeter can still focus on this 11.2 number. But now I have the ability to look at actual signals. Peak detect is turned on. I'm on a five second screen, so I shouldn't miss anything with peak detect on. And I'm really not having any changes here whatsoever. As I'm moving the blower speeds up and down, there's low speed right there, and there's high speed. So really no activity at all. Sorry, you wanna see that digital number too. Let's get that back on the screen no real changes here guys all right um so i could ground that circuit right now and make this blower run is what i'm what i'm saying and i, I maybe i'll do that but it looks like our resistor is faulty let me do some checks on the other wires we just need need to have this module replaced um there's only three other wires so the other three wires for this this is not a blower resistor this absolutely is a module we'd have a power and a ground and then this wire the small gauge wire is my only control so that's the one we want to focus on too but let's get a quick reading of the main feed coming in there's 11 5 and then the main ground this should be near zero volts there's zero the hash that's in the signal is because i have peak detect turned on i certainly don't need to be on a 50 volt scale here won't change anything where we are but so good power good ground and this is my control pin pulsed signal and let's change our time base here so you guys can see this and we'll put a trigger in here to make that steady what we should see I'm going back up here what we should see with this is as I am changing my blower speed we should see different pulse widths and I know that you're not really seeing that now, Caleb, because you're focused on me. Um, but notice the pulse width change means my commands are here, the signals are here. Computer is working fine, the HVAC computer is working fine. What it's doing, Caleb, is this, the HVAC computer is actually part of this cluster. So it's literally right behind here. Mm -hmm. And what this is telling us is the HVAC computer is 
telling this blower module what to do and the blower module controls the blower motor. So what this tells us by this signal changing as I'm changing the fan speed is there is nothing wrong with my HVAC computer. There's nothing wrong with the signals coming down to my module. There's nothing wrong with my module power as in grounds. That's the blower module. For you guys that aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, the blower module for this car would be the equivalent of a blower resistor. This is not a circuit that drops voltage by using a resistor. It is actually pulse width modulating the blower motor to control its speed. And that's what this is right here. The signal from the HVAC computer is signaling the blower module what to do. The blower module has a good power and a good ground. We're done, it needs a blower module. It's really that, that simple. We're finished already with this one. We'll, we'll back it up with one final thing, which is me energizing the blower motor myself. But as you can see, this is fan speed on low. We have a certain pulse width signal. And then this is, as I scroll up there, I'll go in increments. There's low. There's uh, the next step up. Next one up. That's third speed. There's the fourth speed. Fifth. And then there's high. Okay? So it's telling the computer what to do. Computer being the module. The module is controlling this blower motor by the ground side of the circuit. I'm pretty confident in that. Let's turn this trigger off. Or we'll put it on auto. And then change our time base. This is the, I just, I need to get my polarity here for a second. That is the ground of the motor. And a ground is, this is the one that should be being pulsed right now. And it's not. And then the feed, right, 11.5. Let me unplug this and get two readings on the pins of the module itself. Yeah, that's the ground pin. And that's my power feed. So it's definitely ground side controlled. With it un... Ha! Just made it turn on. You need to put a resist uh, module in this, Pete. Okay? Lower resistor. Yeah, it's really not a resistor in this case. It's a, it's a module, but yeah, when you order the part, you can ask for a blower resistor. It's not a resistor. What is that right there? It's just by me unplugging it and plugging it back in on the connector, it came back to life. And two bolts. Yeah, just two bolts. I'll bet you that's one that you probably could pull apart and re-solder a crack solder joint is my guess. Uh, but let's look at these signals now. This is on the ground side of the circuit. We're reading 0.24, that's blower on high. This is blower on... The next one, what we'll see is our voltages are going to rise here. And you can see that that's exactly what's happening. This is what it should be doing. And that's with the blower on low. And then when I turn the blower off, that should go to full battery voltage. Let me change my time base a little bit longer so you guys can see that. Let's go 10 seconds. This is a ground side switch circuit, guys. So for you guys that need more info on what I'm talking about and how I determined that the ground side's being controlled on this, this is chapter three material. Scanner Danner Premium, chapter three material, or chapter three in my book. I cover power and ground side switching. What I did is I had two readings. I had 12 and 12, okay? Unplugged the connector, I read 12 and zero told me this is ground side switched and our issue was this module was not supplying the ground that it needed to for the motor itself uh, we proved the module has good powers and grounds itself and the motor power and ground was where our issue is no ground on I don't think I'm making sense here Hold on. there are two sets of powers and grounds um, and then there's a so there's four wires to this Come down here, get my hand. All right, just wanna make sure that I'm clear on what I'm saying here to you guys. Um, this is a module. 
This module, any module, to work needs a power and a ground. The main power and ground are these two guys right here. Those were good. We had 12 volts on this red one, and we had zero volts on this ground with the blower being commanded on. The computer was telling this module what to do on this small gauge wire. We checked that one. We know that that's, those signals are good. Computer was telling this module, turn the blower on, and it was not. We did some measurements on these two wires, the other two power and ground wires. This is the blower motor power and ground. And we determined that it's ground side switched and the module was not turning the ground onto the motor. So when you see something like that, you have to make sure that your module has good power and ground, especially the ground in this circumstance. This one was low all the time. At the same time, this ground was high, telling us the module was not grounding the blower motor. Okay. The only option then would be to make sure that your computer is telling the module what to do, and it was. All right. Um, keep in mind the power on the purple wire comes actually from the red wire. The red wire goes inside into the module, wraps around, comes out on the purple, constant power on the purple, and a pulsed ground on the black motor control circuit that's the one that i was just on right now that's the one i'm going to show you one more time this is normal circuit operation and all i did guys was unplug it and plug it back in right there at that cert at that connection so what that tells me is inside this module you got a bad pin all right we'll focus on the screen now this is circuit off voltage right now 11.5 is my circuit off voltage, right? Ground side switched, no ground, normal ground voltage with no ground, 12 volts. Turn the circuit on, and this is the blower on the lowest setting. You see a slight drop in voltage. We're giving this motor a partial ground. Right now it's, you can actually see the fuzz right here, Caleb. You can see that our blower motor is working on the lowest speed right now, okay? and we have less than battery voltage less than battery voltage this is blower position two notice the voltage dropped even lower we're giving a better ground my little piece of fuzz here is blowing more you don't need to zoom in on it but okay it's working next step okay dropping voltage again each time voltage drops we're giving a better and better and better ground that's what's happening here next step next step and then here's your high position now what's cool is i can show you all of that on the screen together each one of these steps so this is circuit off this is low two three four five high that's how it should work nothing wrong with this blower motor guys i don't need to now manually energize it um, it's just an issue with the module itself. We're done. I mean, it's really that simple. Um, can we take this module apart and see if there's a cracked solder joint? Hell yeah, we can. I'm going to try it. It'll be real quick. Because I'm calling this motor is bad. And we're going to change it, of course. But this will be a good lesson on on uh, crack solder joints if this has one i'm pretty sure that based on the fact that it worked as soon as i unplugged it and then plugged it back in um kind of tells me that we're dealing with a circuit board issue i know some of you are thinking well, what about the connector itself well, you saw me just look at it. There's nothing wrong with this connector. There's no corrosion. The pins aren't spread apart. And we got nothing like that going on. These things are really susceptible to heat. Think about what this module does. It carries all the current flow for this blower motor. And it's constantly pulsing on and off. Well, technically, it's the, 
input that's pulsing the oh yeah we can't we can't do anything with this the, these are all cooling fins Caleb and uh, there really is no taking this apart I don't think what's cool is I was able to show you guys a working circuit I don't care if I break it because I did break it yeah I can't see this with my naked eye so I'm freaking blind got my readers you know someone who is more patient than me today because Caleb's got to go I don't see any cracked solder joints but does not change our call nice easy diagnosis on a blower in op blower circuit on a GM pretty standard practice some people are afraid of computer controls you know they'd rather have old school resistors guys that was easier to test than a resistor bank two main feeds one computer control and then two wires that go to the blower motor blower you can call this a resistor it's really not a resistor it's a module this module controls the pulse width of the blower motor for more information pulse width modulation duty cycle controls power ground side switching module to module communication voltage drop measurements how to know if a circuits power or ground side switched scanner danner premium it's available on my website there's a 14 day free trial you guys can check it out i teach at a technical college rosedale technical college in pittsburgh pennsylvania you guys should check us out there too but come over to my website i've recorded all of my classroom lectures i talk about all of this stuff can reinforce this further for you guys pretty standard troubleshooting procedure on this vehicle foundational information that's what i focus on you guys have been following me long enough know this so come check it out that's scannerdanner.com scanner danner premium click on the scanner danner premium tab there's a 14 day free trial hope to see you guys there thank you caleb for being my cameraman today everybody can say thank you to caleb we'll see you guys next time